I was recording this review for this episode, and the freaking camera wasn't recording. And I was like halfway done too. <laughs> Dang it! Anyways, I gotta do this all again. <laughs> I'm reviewing the first episode of Season 2 Mob Psycho 100. I'm so glad that it's back. Like, it's been a long wait. I was actually afraid they wouldn't bring it back. Because uh, I didn't hear nothing about it until they were, like, almost done, I think, with the, uh, with animating it. So it's here. First episode's here. Let's get into this. So it starts off with, uh, Reagan investigating, like, some haunted farm or something. Pretty much the same thing he's always been doing, just scamming people. Uh, the guy was saying, like, he saw something weird at night in his farm. The next day, all the crops were wilted. So it was, like some kind of weird demon that likes crops, I guess. So he looks into it, and he summons Mob to take care of it, of course, because he doesn't have any powers. Mob's the only one that does everything for him. And it's this weird, like, creature. Like, the demon uses the vines to make, like, its form. And it is the creepiest freaking demon so far in the show, I think. Especially the way they made all the vines, like, have the little spaces in it, look like holes. Uh, and then it had like the red eyes or whatever, like the glowing eyes, and this the, it had a scarecrow hat. Cause it started as a scarecrow, and then it turned into this ginormous thing. But Mob, no problem, takes care of this thing. I love the way it was talking. Like, you, my abilities are so superior to yours. There's nothing you can do against this. I'm gonna suck out all your life energy. And it's like, like this is Mob. He's the one punch man of the series. You you can't do anything to him. <laughs> He's gonna kill you. So he does, he kills the ghost, and it turned out to be like a skull of a dead body or something that was like possessing the earth. Um, it was pretty neat. The biggest thing though was that Mob noticed the, the demon was like possessing the plants, like the cells of the plant or something, and controlling the vines that way. It wasn't that the vines themselves were the demon. So he sent his own signal to the vines and overrode the demon signal and like he was able to control the vines himself i wonder if that's going to be something that they continue in the series that he can control plants and stuff that'd be kind of cool um they had the in the intro was amazing i love the new intro i wish they would have kept the music though from the first intro uh i think it was way better than this one to be honest however the animation is incredible i was just blown away with how great it was so it's it wasn't all bad. I, st I just still miss that. The intro of the first season was just amazing. So we get started with this small little group of like these cultists that were like the remaining the remaining people that were from the, uh, the LOL cult from the first season that got rescued by Mob, uh, including the little journalist girl. I don't remember anyone's name in this show, so I'm sorry ahead of time if <laughs> that's a problem. But they're looking for Mob, but they don't know they're looking for Mob. Because all they know is this boy who saved them with psychic powers, or he had powers and stuff. And they're calling it the Psycho Helmet uh, religion, I guess, or whatever. Because his bowl cut looks like a helmet. I don't know if they saw him too clearly or what happened, but she knows. The journalist girl knows who it is. She knows it's Mob. But she knows he's not ready to be a leader yet. So she has to, like, mold him to be the leader. But it's not going to happen because Mob is not that kind of person. He's very humble. He's very quiet. He's not the leader type of person. Um, his brother is, though. I would like to see his brother be a leader of something. Uh, but not Mob. But she still thinks he could become a good leader, so she ventures to mold him by persuading him to uh, run for student council president because the other guy, the one, the original one, the garbage boy or whatever he is, uh, he dropped out. Uh, because he felt bad for what he did. So there's an opening now. So she thinks Mob could do it. And she kind of bribes him with saying like, Oh, the girl that you like will, th will admire you more if you step up into this role. So he gets talked into it. Because he kind of gets talked into a lot of stuff. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> uh, but it, I, knew it was not gonna, I knew it was going to turn out well. Because Mob, I didn't expect him to just like be amazing at speeches and stuff. So it wasn't going to turn out well. But... I mean, the idea is cool of him being in that kind of role, but no. Um, I didn't expect the, uh, that garbage boy, the one who, like, who was student council president but dropped out, 
uh, I was surprised to see he's like rerunning to be president again. I guess to like make amends for what he's done and give a chance for somebody else to go in. Uh, so that was cool. I mean, I didn't expect that. I thought he would just like give up, but I guess it's kind of cool to see a recurring character like try to do something and like have some growth in their character development a little bit. However, we get to mob speech and it was amazing. <laughs> he literally goes up on the stage, takes a deep breath, and that's it. He just holds it. <laughs> and they have like five minutes to give a speech and he doesn't say a single word. He just holds his mouth open. And that was it. That was the, that was the end of his career. <laughs> um, I pretty much expected something like that to happen, but it was still funny when it did. Uh, but I mean, the, the journalist girl tried with Mob, but I, he's just not that kind of guy. They had the results, and the first place was Kamuro. And I is that the garbage kid? Like, did he get reelected? I don't know the names of these characters. I know that uh, Kageyama is Mob, and he got last place. So obvious. But Kamura or whatever, I, is that the garbage guy? Who, I don't know who, who won first place. I didn't really get to see who won first I don't know if I wasn't paying attention or what, but I mean, it would make sense. that It would make the whole thing pointless if he got re-elected re because it was like, what was all this for? But whatever, I guess. So we find out that Mob gets himself a little girlfriend. He gets like a love letter. Uh, this girl talks to him, says she asked him out. I already suspected something was off because... There was no reason for her to do this. I kind of felt like he was being bullied in some way because of his speech. Uh, but he goes out with her for quite a long time, like a week or two, I think. Um, even Reagan was surprised at this. Like, he couldn't believe, like, wait, you have a girlfriend? There's no way. Everyone was like, there's no way he'd have a girlfriend. Like, a guy like him? Uh, but yeah, they went out and they looked really happy together. It was really nice to see Mob, like, blushing and be happy. I just... I knew that it wasn't going to last. I knew something was wrong with it. And I mean, she even shared things with him that she didn't share with anybody else. Like, I feel like she started it, like, as making fun of him. And then she started to open up to him because she saw how a genuine person he was and how nice he was. And she had him read, like, a novel that she was writing. And she's never showed anybody before. And she showed it to him. And he, see he really en he enjoyed it because it he knew it was special for her. Uh, but she misunderstood, uh, something he said and got angry and told him the truth that she was put for a dare to ask him out. Um, and saying that she, he, she felt like he didn't have any emotion, that he kind of just like, he didn't show how he truly felt. And I felt bad for Ma because she doesn't know the reason he does that is because he doesn't want to hurt anyone with his psychic powers. And I, f I just feel so bad for him. He can't tell her the truth. And he doesn't really show anybody his powers, so it's not like he can just tell her and show her. So he kind of just sits there and she just leaves him sitting there by himself. She meets up with her friends. Uh, I think her name's Emmy, the one that was dating Mob. She meets up with her friends and she they, they start reading her novel and they're like, well, what a piece of crap. This is garbage. I can't believe you wrote this. And it's sad. It's so real the way they put this because she was like, Emmy was saying, oh, I was bored, it, it's nothing, I was just really bored, that's why I wrote that stuff. And they're like, oh, if you were bored, then this is me, and they just ripped it up. And it's like, ooh, you know she's trying to please them. Even though it's special to her, they, she doesn't want to be seen as like uncool or stupid. Like, oh, there's no way I would write something like, like garbage. I can't let them know that I wrote it for, for because I love to write. And it's all about image. She's just so worried about her image with her friends that she just lets her something she cares about get ripped up to pieces. And she just blows it off like... she. I, you can tell that she's upset about it, but she doesn't want to show she's upset because she doesn't want them to know that it's precious to her. And it, it's, so real, it's so real life. Like, there's a lot of people who go through stuff like that and they only care about their image and what other people think of them. And they'll hide all of their likes and their passions just because they think it might be uncool to other people. So we have Mob come in and he tells him to stop, he starts picking up the pieces and he's like, if you don't want this, I want it because I think it's really something special. And he's crying as he picks up the pieces because he's, he said something like, you need to pick up the things that are important to you and it opened this girl's eyes and she realized like, 
he really he showed his emotion and she saw how real he was and that she realized her mistake of letting them do that to her and and letting she realized that she wasn't supposed to focus so much on her image and she should care about her passions and and show them to people and be proud of them so she helps him pick up the pieces and tells her friends to get lost pretty much um but it was it was i almost i teared up when i saw mob doing that because it's like he's such a good person and i feel like everybody like either they're making fun of him or they call him a weirdo or a creep but he's such a genuine good-hearted person and there's a lot of people in there in the real world like that who are good people who get made fun of because they're different or whatever uh the pieces blow away in the wind uh, that they were picking up and she's like what like what are we doing why are we doing this like we want to chase after the pieces and he decides in that moment to show her his psychic ability and it was so cool the music was amazing the art the animation he reaches out pulls all the pieces back and forms them back into the whole piece and she just stands there like in amazement like it was the most beautiful thing she's ever seen and he hands it to her and he's like here you go I have pow I'm, I'm an esper and I was so glad I was really worried that she was gonna freak out and scream at him like oh my god what the hell is this who are you you're a monster I, like make fun of him but she didn't she she thanked him and I think he got a little bit of I think she got a little bit of a crush on him after that because you could tell that she really appreciated uh, him doing that for her that he went out of his way to help her for no reason she da like dated him and like left him there by himself all because of a dare to make fun of him like he should hate her for that but he doesn't he doesn't have that kind of feeling in his heart he just wants to help her and i think that's so amazing of him to do that so you see in the end uh, her thinking about like what to write uh for another novel or continue the novel and she decides to come up with a psychic a boy a middle school boy who has psychic powers and that's what she starts so she starts writing about mob in her story and she says he's really amazing or something i think she has a little crush on him now and i think i ship them <laughs> i don't care i kind of liked mob with the journalist girl uh i knew him and the girl that he that he actually liked subomi or whatever her name is i knew that they were never going to be a thing but th these two like i kind of like them too i hope we see more of her because it was a really cool character. I didn't. I, I don't remember her seeing her in season one, but it was a really cool character moment. Just like have her in the story. Uh, so hopefully we see more of Emmy because I, I really liked her a lot. But yeah, that was pretty much the whole episode. I mean, it wasn't super action packed or anything, but the story was just really good. Um, the story was really intriguing. Uh, I never got bored while watching it, but that's pretty typical with this with this show. Uh, I'm interested to see where things go from here. I feel like it's going to be a couple of like little m adventures here and there until we get to the actual story with the uh, Claw, I think is the group name that is out there, the bo the main boss. Uh, so I hope we see that soon. But anyways, I would probably give this episode, I would say like an 8 out of 10. I would probably give it a 9 out of 10, but I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, but it was a really strong episode. I really enjoyed it. Um, and let me know what you guys think. Did you guys enjoy this episode? Uh, is there anything that you th thought that I didn't say that you wanted to talk about? Just let me know in the comments. Um, I hope you have a great one. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, check out my gaming playlist. I'm playing Red Dead Redemption 2 still. And I'm started to play uh, the final season of The Walking Dead. So check those out for me. Um, but yeah, have a great one, guys. I'll catch you next time.